Greetings, I am Hernando de Soto. 475 years ago, I came to La Florida on a mission of exploration and conquest that included the land that would one day become Georgia. Today, we commemorate the founding of the Georgia colony and observe the anniversary of my expedition as seen through the eyes of Savannah's children. Join me and the Georgia Historical Society as the Southern Scene presents the 2015 Georgia Day Parade. The Southern Scene coverage of the 2015 Georgia Day Parade is presented for you with limited commercial interruption by J.C. Lewis Ford. And hello, everybody from downtown Savannah. I'm Natalie Hendricks. Welcome to the Southern Scenes Georgia Day Parade coverage. We're so excited to be here, and I have Sophia Saneeth with me. Sophia, it's always great to see you. It's great to see you, and I'm so excited to be here today to help host the Georgia Day Parade. What an exciting day. We've been working so hard, and we're about to see 2,000 children dressed in colonial outfit marching down the street. Of course, we know Sophia Saneeth is with the Georgia Historical Society. And as she said, they have been incredibly busy uh, right after the parade last year. Well, guess what? They got ready for this coming year. It seems right. like just yesterday we were sitting along this parade route That's and right. here we are again. That's right. Here we are again and we love doing it. It's our biggest educational event of the year. So I'm excited to work on it all year. And on this day, I'm just joyous. <laughs> well, I love the fact that we are live streaming on WSAV.com and then also you're going to be able to see us at noon on WSAV and you'll be able to see the full parade coverage tonight on my LC at 7 p.m. But before we get underway and get those kids coming down the parade route all dressed in attire, our own WSAV's Martin is uh, on the parade route. Let's go to Martin right now and see who he's caught up with. Martin. Good morning, Natalie, and happy Georgia Day to you and everyone watching. You know, it's quite a day, but the weather might have an impact on the turnout. You know, we see some families gathered here to catch a sight of their young ones making their way from Forsyth Park here to the intersection of Bull and Bay Streets in the shadow of the Gold Dome. The weather is chilly, as you know, but it's a pretty cool parade with the kids dressed in the period pieces. The streets are still open now, but the parade is set to get underway, and we'll be catching up with some of the folks watching straight ahead. Back to you, Natalie. Thanks a lot, Martin. I have no doubt you'll be covering that parade route. And let me tell you, that black hat, it's working for you. <laughs> it sure is. And it it may be chilly, but those kids don't care. They're so excited, and I'm excited, too, so this is going to be great. You know, so Sophia, now, of course, this year and every year, we celebrate a historical figure with That's this right. being Hernando de Soto this year. That's and right. we spoke with Stan Deaton, who, of course, is uh, with the Georgia Historical Society as the head senior historian. That's correct. And we t he talked to us about what goes into picking that uh, historical figure each right. year. Well, we try to find somebody, again, if we do 18th century one year, we try to maybe do something in the 20th century the next. We try to find, is there an anniversary that we can hang this on? As I said, this is the 475th anniversary of DeSoto's death. Um, maybe it's the centennial of somebody's birth one year. Um, so we try to, if we can, find something that makes sense historically, why we're doing that. Is it somebody we haven't done before? Is it a new area for us? Is it something that children will really get into? So we, we try to think about all of these and think creatively about it. So, Sophia, there really is a process with this. That's right. First, we start to think about, are there any anniversaries coming up or anything that we can really commemorate or observe that year? And also, we think about the students. You know, what are in their standards? What are they learning about? And this year, it's been so exciting to teach about archaeology and about how we learn about 16th century and about geography and exploration. So it, it's really been great. And the kids really embraced this year. They really did. In fact, you're going to see banners walking down the street with maps and with pictures and archaeology objects they really did a great job so a lot of things that you added to it's not it was just more than just picking the historical figure Hernando de Soto a lot of different things educationally this year that's right that's right including um, like I said archaeology and uh, geography and Spanish exploration in general so we're talking about a whole period of Georgia's history a lot of people don't know about which is the time of Spanish exploration you know speaking of history 
history. There's a family here who has had an incredible history, many, many years here in Savannah. And of course, we all know the name Lewis, J.C. Lewis. We had the opportunity to speak to uh, the, one of the Lewises recently. And let me tell you, the, the amount of work that they do in this area and the support that they give to this community. And of course, we have to say they're sponsoring the Georgia Day Parade. And, and we want to say thank you to J.C. Lewis. But it's incredible the history that that family has had here in this area. Well, my grandfather started it in 1912. He, uh, he bought a business from Mr. Weeks, from the Fox and Weeks organization. And uh, Mr. Weeks decided uh, he'd rather get in the funeral business and get out of the car business. And he approached my grandfather and wanted to sell it for $500. But my grandfather didn't have the $500, so Mr. Weeks was kind enough to loan it to him. So he loaned it to him, and he bought it. And at the time, it was located down on Bull Street, right across from the Hilton. And they stayed there for a couple of years, and then he relocated it down to where the uh, SCAD Oglethorpe House is on Oglethorpe and Barnard. And that's where they were till I'd say, sometime in the 1960s before they relocated again out to uh, 5505 Abercorn and into this current location um, early 1970-71. Well, I think we are uh, probably partially responsible for helping to uh, motorize Savannah is when my grandfather started. I don't believe there were a lot of, a lot of uh, cars around town and they used to take horses and mules in on trade. In fact, horses uh, and mules horses on trade. Horses and mules would be taken in on trade. In fact, uh, my grandfather traded in uh, the first batch of uh, horses for police cars, the first police cars in the city of Savannah. Well, Georgia's been around, what, 280 years, and uh, there's a lot of history, and uh, I probably could do to go to the parade myself and try to learn a little history. I wasn't the best history student myself. <laughs> you and me either. I know there's a lot I of history to be learned, and, uh, you know, that's, that's part of what makes us all in Georgia because there's a, there's a lot of history and um, we're just glad to be a part of it for our 100 years. At J.C. Lewis Ford, save up to $10,000 off MSRP on remaining 2014 F-150s plus an additional $1,500 rebate with a 1995 or newer trade and $1,000 if you finance with Ford Credit. We want to thank Walter Lewis for speaking with us and always thank J.C. Lewis for uh, sponsoring our coverage here today. And the Georgia Historical Society would also like to thank our Georgia History Festival sponsors, including Georgia Power, another company with a lot of history here in Savannah. And it's just such a community event, and all these companies come in to support us. It's a great feeling. Well, and that's the thing. You know, without those wonderful sponsors, it's events like this that basically wouldn't take place. It's so true. And I love that Mr. Lewis said he wasn't a good history student. He wants to come to the parade. And really, <laughs> that's what it's all about. We hope that the excitement of the day sparks a lifelong journey of learning about history and how it impacts our present and future so he really understands the the point of, of sponsoring it and helping us out today but Sophia it really is more than just about today I mean of That's course right. uh, this is the big celebration when the kids all get to you know take part and participate in and and dress in those wonderful historical costumes and and we hear who wins the banner contest That's right, that they've what been everybody's working waiting for. so incredibly <laughs> hard on I mean you guys work year-round and and, right. and, and this entire month, there have been all kinds of events going on. That's right. In fact, we've gone into 10 schools in the local area, bringing a special presentation with the help of Massey Heritage Center. And um, we've also been helping with um, students with curriculum that we put online that an intern, Erica Carter, helped us make and make available to students all over the state, not just Savannah. And um, we've been doing... Um, the cricket tournament that's coming up in March, preparing for that. So there's all kinds of events. Of course, we had our trustees gala just this week. Which weekend. is always the event of the season. <laughs> right. It is it the event of the season. It was on Valentine's Day this year. It was on Valentine's Day, and it was beautiful. It was the Seven Empires theme, and we inducted our two trustees. And it was just a wonderful night, and um, we still have more to do. We have more in-school presentations. So even after today, it's not over. And all year long, we'll be supporting teachers through teacher training and through curriculum and really 
all over Georgia supporting history education. You know, here in Savannah, of course, we, we've all heard of the Georgia Historical Society. But what a lot of people don't realize is, is this really is the headquarters here. I That's mean, right. right here in Savannah, Georgia, Georgia Historical Society. Now, we're all familiar with the beautiful Hodgson Hall. Let's talk about this, Sophia. And for the folks who've driven by this beautiful building a million times, what is actually inside here? Because it's just breathtaking. Well, uh, we've been described as Georgia's elegant attic. And so that means that inside Hodgson Hall, you have the archival collections for topics all over the state. And we have papers dating back from the colonial times all the way to the present. We're constantly collecting. So this is really the heart and soul of the Georgia Historical Society. It's where all the history lives, and it's where researchers come in to interact with our artifacts and with our collections. We have school groups that come in to learn about um, archives and about history. So it's a beautiful and it's architecture, but what's really beautiful about it is all of the knowledge that's inside. And this really is history at your fingertips. That's right. And anyone is welcome to come in. You don't have to be a member. You can come and visit. We have a few displays there. So we encourage everyone to come see this treasure that really belongs to all of us. You know, I'm amazed. I mean, I'm amazed at the people who have driven by, and they've even said, I That's wonder what's right. in that building. Yeah. I love when I've had folks who come in town, and, and they've actually said that, um, you know, and they've said, what's in this beautiful building? And I said, oh, you got to go inside. That's right. You just got to go inside. And so many people who come into this area are history buffs. That's right. And I hear so many people who say, you know, ah, oh, I did terrible in history, but before they leave this city, you know, they get bitten by that history bug. Absolutely. <laughs> it's hard not to in our beautiful historic streets. And then I hope everyone takes the next step and go online to georgiahistory.com and read about our state's history and interact with some of our online collections and really see the artifacts of history. That's what we do with the students today, and that's what we do um, with our adults in Georgia. So it's really great. We love it at Hodgson Hall. It's beautiful. Well, you know, it's just amazing the work that you guys uh, put in. And the thing about it is, is, you know, you're not stopping just with Hodgson Hall now That's because right. the Georgia Historical Society, they are constantly growing. That's history right. is becoming history every <laughs> single day. Absolutely. And you have to have space for that. Mm -hmm. That's true. In fact, we just moved into the Jepson House Education Center this summer. It's a building right across the street. It used to be a family home, and we've converted it to our administrative and programs office. So that's really where we do the hard work for the parade and all of the Georgia History Festival from that beautiful beautiful new building and we're so thankful to everyone who made that possible. Now Sophia talk about because you really do a lot with the education mm -hmm. side of the Georgia Historical Society a lot of in-school instruction That's and right. and that kind of thing when it comes to the Georgia Historical Society. And in particular this month we've been doing in-school presentations at local schools and um, it's been called Discovering Hernando de Soto and the Exploration of Spain and here you can see students at St. James Catholic school one of the 10 schools we went to learning about the Colombian exchange doing activities and games really hands-on to learn about archaeology and about map making and geography and most of them also got to try on Hernando de Soto's <laughs> helmet um, which they loved doing and it's just been a lot of fun to get in the elementary schools and really interact and I've been able to wear my teacher whistle which is something I really have fun I doing. was gonna say we <laughs> saw you in that video there there, Sophia right. in action in her element doing what you do best and you really enjoy this Sophia I do I enjoy this so much and I just love getting with the kids and asking them questions and seeing their smiles and excitements it reminds me about when I was first bitten by the history bug as a young child my parents used to take me to historic sites and I got to interact with the living history and to be able to bring that to the classroom without the students even having to come outside or go on a field trip has been really rewarding for me you know I grew up here in this area, I've been from this area, you know, native, uh, native to Bullock County, but I've been in Savannah for the past 30 years and in the TV market for 30 years. And of course, my show, The Southern Scene, it's all about being on the scene. That's of course, right. uh, you know, broadcast and produced by WSAV. And I love it because we get to walk around and find those hidden treasures, not only in Savannah, but Coastal Empire and Low Country. And did you know there's not a day that goes by that I don't learn something new 
about this beautiful city That's and about right. our wonderful state. I mean, thanks to the Georgia Historical Society, you guys have been on the Southern scene many, many times. That's right. And you've provided us with travel series, giving our viewers opportunities. You know, instead of going to that beach resort or something <laughs> like that, you can go and have a great time with your family and uh, and friends and, and, and actually make it an educational experience. In fact, we have the uh, Georgia Historical Marker Program as one of the programs we do at the Historical Society. And you can go on our website and find a map of historical markers all over the state so when you're on your vacations you drop by a marker and learn a little bit about history as you come along now you know I I just heard through the grapevine that the kids are getting closer Very you know exciting. they're gonna be adorning those beautiful costumes uh, they're so excited because they put in so much time learning about of course Hernando de Soto That's you right. guys are we talked just a few minutes ago about expanding your campus and you mentioned the Jebson uh, Education Center yes. and I had the opportunity to go in and talk to Stan Deaton and also dr. Uh, Todd gross there and it was just a wonderful wonderful day and you Talk about a beautiful place. That's, That's right. an amazing place. <laughs> but that has to feel great that you guys are expanding that campus. It does. It feels wonderful. And it feels great also to give the library some more space so they can keep growing the collections. So it's been really fun to move. We live. We have this beautiful place where we can display some of our portraits and where we can have more effective workspaces and do things like the Georgia History Festival better. As I think we're I can looking, hear the band coming. I, 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 I was going to say, you know, we're looking down the street right now across Johnson Square. You can see the color guard. You can see the band coming. That means that those kids are right behind them. So uh, the parade is really about to get underway. <laughs> and we're great. so excited because, you know what, this is what it all comes down to. Yes, absolutely. And it's one of the only parades I know of in the whole country that it's not floats. You know, it really focuses on the kids and the hard work they've done on their band and the costumes so I get really excited I haven't seen any of them yet so this is gonna be wonderful I do too each and every year and you know what I'm amazed at the adults that end up walking with their kids and right. teachers and that kind of thing and some of them actually remember walking in the parade <laughs> as kids years and years ago that's right in fact the parade in its current form has been going since 1965 and so we have teachers and parents 65 that's right and even before that there's always been some sort of commemoration about georgia day so it's become a rite of passage for students to walk down Bull Street in their colonial outfits, and we love being a part of that. Every Kids year. look forward to this each and every year, and you know, for all of you at home watching right now, you know, you're watching a parade, but it's not just about the parade. These kids have put in hours and hours and hours of education, learning all about Hernando de Soto, learning all about Georgia history, and it's right. all thanks to the Georgia Historical Society. <laughs> and of course, on a chilly day like today, dressed in their colonial <laughs> outfits, they can begin to imagine what it was like for the first 120 colonists who landed here in 1733 camping in tents until they could build their houses so can you imagine sort of that immersive. I it's mean you know and it makes you think be thankful for you know what we should be grateful for that's right you know the heat that we have in our homes the roof we have over our heads right. um, and the all the clothes that they were we're wearing the that's gloves right. that we have on I mean the things that we should be grateful for if you step back in time and realize on a day like this and remember Remember, the day is going to turn into night, right. and believe me, you know what? Some of those folks, they weren't going inside a home with a roof and that kind of thing. <laughs> That's right, absolutely. And when they landed here, they saw tall pine trees, and they looked and knew that they had to put their hands to work to clear that area and to build their houses, and it established the city we have today. They laid out these beautiful streets and squares, so it all started then. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our broadcast. And this is the third ID color guard. And in fact, we want to thank them for their service and know that about 3,000 from third ID will be deploying to Europe for Operation Atlantic Resolve soon. So we're so grateful for them and for Rocky um, here today. Of course, we want to thank these men and women in our armed forces for the fabulous service. As Sophia said, they always are so wonderful to participate in these fabulous parades that we have here in Savannah and of course we're glad to have them with us today in the Georgia Day Parade. You know and this is one of the first uh, major performances for this combined honor band we're seeing under the direction of Brandon Tucker. They've been working really hard to lead our parade in and we're so grateful for them to come. And they're also going to be playing the national anthem for us later, so that will be great. Well, and it's wonderful that you have everybody come together. Now, we're seeing our first group of students come here. All right. 
Oh, look at them waving at the cameras. They're happy. Let me tell you, they've been looking forward to this particular day. Now, they are excited, Sophia. And I believe those were middle schoolers from Coastal Middle School. And I want to give a big shout out to Coastal Middle School. They will also be portraying some of our former featured historical figures here. Look at those costumes. Oh, look, there you see Mary Telfair in the big red dress. That's um, Abby Pearson and... All those Coastal Middle School students are doing such a great job. Now, I do want to say we saw a lot of banners that have passed by. Uh, Georgia Power, Kreitz, uh, Chick-fil-A, all sponsors in some capacity in, uh, in the fabulous stuff that the Georgia Historical Society is all about. That's right. Delta, Gulfstream, the Coca-Cola Company, Colonial Oil, Jepson Associates, Sonova Sea Island Bank, they've all been our major sponsors this year, and they are the ones that make all of this possible. So thank you. Know, you know, the teachers are actually really excited you oh, see one of the absolutely. banners there uh, the There's teachers the are Savannah fabulous they, they, they work so hard with these kids and they look forward to today as well and I really enjoy working back and forth emails and calls with the teacher as we prepare for the day um, and, and sharing with them all the resources we've created they do such hard work to get our kids ready for today and the kids are still waving for the camera <laughs> a lot of them dressed take a look at that oh, there's Port elementary. elementary oh they're serious about that banner now. yes they are proudly <laughs> displaying that as they walk down here's the Habersham school marching behind I the they're waving flags. That's right. I love the costumes. And I know somewhere in the parade is our featured historical figure, Hernando de Soto, and I believe he might have a special message for the students today. As a young boy in Spain, I dreamed of exploring new lands. The young people of today, they can use people like me as an example so that they too may reach for the stars. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our broadcast. And right behind is Schumann Elementary, and they always have a very unique banner with the paper mache figure. Oh, they're doing the whole 3D effect. That's right, they go very 3D <laughs> every year. That's very exciting. And you see Janine uh, Maccabee, who's a teacher there at Schumann Elementary. She's actually retiring this year after over 20 years of education in Savannah Chatham County Schools. So, so I want to say so special. inspiring, so inspiring. You know the fabulous education that we have here in this area, and the teachers, the fabulous teachers who put in so much time. You know, for these kids, Hodge Elementary School, Georgia That's Day right. Banner there. They also went 3D with their telescope there and their geography. They're doing such a great job. You know, let's talk about the trustees. Absolutely. I mean, the trustees, because the trustees are really important to the Georgia right. Historical Society. And, of course, this year I know Paula Wallace was one of the folks who were chosen as the trustee. Talk about that, Sophia, sure. and explain the process with that and why that's important. Absolutely. You know, when Georgia was first founded as a colony, it was led by a group of trustees. And they had a motto, it was non sibi said elise, which means not for self, but for others. And so every year the governor's office and the Georgia Historical Society chooses two Georgians who have really exemplified not for self, but for others. And we induct them at the trustees gala. So this year, um, Savannah's own Paula Wallace, the founder of SCAD, was one of those, and Alana Shepard, founder of the Shepard Center in Atlanta. So they were both inducted by Vince Dooley, our 2011 trustee, on Saturday night. And so they really represent the modern Georgia trustee who gives their all for our state um, in a variety of different ways. And it's so important. We had the opportunity to speak to Paula Wallace about being a trustee. I really think it's a reflection of the work of our 12,000 students, our thousands of faculty and staff, our 30,000 alumni. It's really an award for them and for their accomplishments uh, over these past 36 years.
Of course, Paula Wallace always, uh, you know, you can't deny the fabulous education she's provided That's to right. so many uh, students who have come to this particular area from all over the world. That's all right. over the world. Uh, she really has put Savannah College of Art and Design on the map and really truly believes in history That's and right. the preservation of the history in this area. She was a perfect choice for a trustee because also she helped save the historic buildings of Savannah as well as a part of building a, a wonderful education facility. And she always considers herself an educator. So it's great to be talking to her on Georgia Day Parade where it's all about education. And it's all about these kids and everything they've learned about history and all the work they've done. So much fun. Look at those kids running to the <laughs> camera. They're so excited. What are some of the things, Sophia, some of the kids were saying or that you heard them say as they were learning about Hernando de Soto and, and all of the training that they went through and putting these costumes together, the banners, and what they were looking forward to? That's right. Well, you know, part of the fun of working at the Georgia Historical Society is actually judging the banners. And when you're looking at the banners, you can really tell what the kids learned about. On some of the banners, you could tell they learned about map making and compasses. And when I talk to the kids in the in-school presentations, I could tell they're learning about where the different continents are for and who the different explorers throughout history are. And they ask me questions about, you know, what would they have brought on their trip, you know? And I was surprised the kids didn't say, well, I would bring video games. That's what I thought I would hear, but they were very practical. They would bring food and they would bring weapons, which is exactly what the Spanish did when they came. So um, the so students really had them. They were listening they were and, and listening. understanding. And we learned about- I want to be with those students. Oh, look, like, yes. <laughs> I want to be with those students. At J.C. Lewis Ford, save up to $10,000 off MSRP on remaining 2014 F-150s, plus an additional $1,500 rebate with a 1995 or newer trade at $1,000 dollars if you finance with Ford credit. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our broadcast. The most important people in society, next generation, as they learn about where they've come from and the establishment of Georgia, not only as a colony, but the great state it has grown into over the last couple hundred years. And look at them as they drive, as they drive by. <laughs> they are going the way the colonists went. Many of them went by foot <laughs> they were going, and there's no horsing around on bull street today hundreds of kids here i'm going to grab one real quick hey you want to be on tv only in savannah baby back to you natalie <laughs> Martin, let me tell you, these kids are serious. That's they want right. to know who won that banner competition. They are They're like, straight we don't the have ball. time for you, Martin. We want to know who's won, who, who is going to win that Lord banner competition. The <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's Hancock Day School marching Han behind their banner. Such beautiful banners. Take a look at all those colors. We know the dignitaries are making their way to the presentation stage right in front of City Hall. So compelling. I mean, you know, you were a Girl Scout many, many years ago, but to actually be able to, like you said, read those letters and, and get into those thoughts of something that you participated in many, many years ago. I mean, that's, that's so right. compelling. That's right. It's amazing. And I hope that a lot of students who are participating today someday, they'll be interviewed and talked about what they learn and they'll say you know that georgia day parade i really uh learned about colonial history and it's something that stuck with me and that's what we really are hoping for of course uh we have some of our uh team here wsav always loving participating in the georgia day parade i saw dave cartoon and i saw lee haywood i saw kim gusby <laughs> walking along the parade uh the parade route as well Chief Meteorologist Chris Allred also, and how about this fabulous day? We can thank Chris for that. And you know, I know that Chris's daughter was uh, also marching in the parade. Carson was yes. marching in the parade as well. I tried to spot her along the parade route, but there's so many kids here all excited. I, I missed Carson, but I know she's out there somewhere. I believe Carson is dressed as Martha Washington today. That's the rumor I heard, oh, so I bet she looks adorable it. in her Martha Washington outfit. And I also wanted to point out on the stage, you see our Grand Marshal, Dolly Chisholm. She's also a co-chair of the Georgia History Festival along with Tommy Hill. So I wanted to point her out wearing the Grand, no, she's wearing a Grand Marshal banner with stripes right behind Todd Gross. So you'll see her later. And 
Tommy Hills couldn't be here today, but he's also been a great supporter, and he's from the Atlanta area. They're still streaming in. You know, we have over 2,000 kids to walk all the way from Forsyth to City Hall today. And I'm so excited for the turnout. It's one of the biggest turnouts we've had in the most recent years. Over 36 schools represented today. Over 36 schools. Now, how many kids are we talking that are marching the parade route today? Yeah, we're talking over 2,000 little feet. Mar well, 4,000 little feet, right? 2,000 kids marching down Bull Street. And, the, of course, and, parents and teachers, it's, it's going to be about 3,000 people today. And you know it's you know it's incredible because these kids have been going a ways now. They didn't right. just. This is not just about coming around Johnson Square. I mean, these kids started all the way back that's to right. uh, Forsyth Park, was it? When they started at Forsyth. They Park? all start at Forsyth Park, and let me tell you, that's one of the most fun places to be in Savannah on Georgia Day Parade. At around 10 a.m., you have about 2,000 students all gathered in Forsyth Park, getting lined up and so excited to walk down the street. And so they had that excitement for the day, and now they're marching all the way down here to City Hall. And I love that once they get down here, the ceremony is all about them, and all of the speakers are going to talk to them and thank them for being here and how adorable they look. And it's just a lot of fun. There look, you see the Grand Marshal now. We got a good shout out to the Grand right, Marshal uh, as well. And of course, you mentioned Forsyth Park as the uh, where all the kids show up and, and they gather and get ready for the parade. And that's also the neighboring site of the Georgia Historical Society campus. Um, and of course, we were talking about the expansion of that. And, and I had that fabulous opportunity to walk in there, take our Southern Sink cameras inside there and, and see the beautiful, the beautiful rooms. And you guys had actually grown out of Haunted right. Hall. We even had a few people in uh, what used to be closets that were converted to offices before we moved over. So we definitely needed the new space. <laughs> When we were at the Jepson Education Center, we spoke with Laura there about uh, about all of the wonderful things going on at Jepson Education Center. And you guys are just getting in there too. That's right. You haven't been in there very long. We've we've only been we've moved in in this summer, so we've been settling in, and we were able to plan the historic the history festival from there. So it's our first really breaking in the new offices, and they've been really beautiful. And we've enjoyed giving people tours and getting them to see the new place. And I think we have some video also of uh, Jepson Education Center as, uh, as, as the, the day that we spoke with Laura about uh, that fabulous facility. And I had the privilege to work with Lynn Gresham, who is a local interior designer. And we spent a lot of time talking about the Georgia Historical Society. I mean, she didn't really know us that well, and she made it her job to get to know what we do. So her inspiration was ink. Uh, for the more formal finishes in the, in the building. Um, so the parlor level is really the, what we now consider to be our museum level, where we could hang collections that in the past were sort of stored in the stack. We had to get this right for two reasons. One, as a nonprofit, um, we have a responsibility to be good stewards of the, of the funds and of the you know, generosity of the people that support us. They give us their time, they give us their money, you know, they give us their gifts, and they also, um, Give us their experience. I mean, we had to think about what's the expansion in the next 5, 10, 15 years, and I think that we have room for that now, which we didn't have before. It is beautiful, Sophia. That was um, our COO at the Georgia Historical Society, Laura Garcia Keller, and she really managed the whole process of renovating the Jepson House Education Center, of course, turning it from a home to an office. We had a lot of standards we had to meet, and she really took charge of that and made it a beautiful place to work. And she also has the vision for the trustees gala every year. So she is a She's wonderful a busy, person. She's busy, a very busy, busy <laughs> wonderful leader in Savannah. And um, it's, it's great to work with her. And um, well, we came inside the Jepson Education Center with our Southern Scene cameras and spent the day with Stan Deaton and Todd Gross and, uh, and the fabulous folks uh, in that facility. And it, I was just in awe and amazed at, at, at the beauty of the building. Look at these kids. You know, you wouldn't even know it's a cold day. They're so happy and bouncing around. Well, my grandfather started it in 1912. He, uh, he bought a business from Mr. Weeks 
from the Fox and Weeks organization, and uh, Mr. Weeks decided uh, he'd rather get in the funeral business and get out of the car business, and he approached my grandfather and wanted to sell it for $500, but my grandfather didn't have the $500, so Mr. Weeks was kind enough to loan it to him, so he loaned it to him, and he bought it, and at the time it was located down on Bull Street right across from the Hilton. And they stayed there for a couple of years, and then he relocated it down to where the uh, SCAD Oglethorpe House is on Oglethorpe and Barnard. And that's where they were till I'd say, sometime in the 1960s before they relocated again out to uh, 5505 Abercorn and into this current location, um, early 1970-71. Well, I think we are uh, probably partially responsible for helping to uh, motorize Savannah is when my grandfather started. I don't believe there were a lot of a lot of uh, cars around town, and they used to take horses and mules in on trade. In fact, horses uh, and mules horses on trade. And mules would be taken in on trade. In fact, uh, my grandfather traded in uh, the first batch of uh, horses for police cars, the first police cars of the city of Savannah. Well, Georgia's been around, what, 280 years, and uh, there's a lot of history, and uh, I probably could do to go to the parade myself and try to learn a little history. I wasn't the best history student myself. <laughs> I know you or me either. I know there's a lot I of history to be learned, and, uh, you know, that's, that's part of what makes us all in Georgia, because there's a, there's a lot of history, and um, we're just glad to be a part of it for our 100 years. Uh, I saw in the Georgia Historical Society an opportunity to help an organization meet in a, in a quicker and a more uh, grand way, um, it's uh, some of its full potential. So, um, you know, what is the potential of the organization? It's statewide, it's headquartered here in Georgia's first city, uh, which is rightful, uh, but it is a statewide organization. We have an office in Atlanta, and our stretch is to the very edges of the state boundaries in every direction and even beyond. Um, we live in a state that is so rich with history, just rich with history, and the whole world knows that, and that's why we have so many guests coming here every year and visitors seeing um, a part of the United States that doesn't exist everywhere anymore. Well, we try to find somebody, again, if we do 18th century one year, we try to maybe do something in the 20th century the next. We try to find, is there an anniversary that we can hang this on? As I said, this is the 475th anniversary of DeSoto's death. Um, maybe it's the centennial of somebody's birth one year. Um, so we try to, if we can, find something that makes sense historically, why we're doing that. Is it somebody we haven't done before? Is it a new area for us? Is it something that children will really get into? So we, we try to think about all of these and think creatively about it. I had the privilege to work with Lynn Gresham, who is a local interior designer. And we spent a lot of time talking about the Georgia Historical Society. I mean, she didn't really know us that well. And she made it her job to get to know what we do. So her inspiration was ink uh, for the more formal finishes in the, in the building. Um, so the parlor level is really the what we now consider to be our museum level, where we could hang collections that in the past were sort of stored in the stack. We had to get this right for two reasons. One, as a nonprofit, um, we have a responsibility to be good stewards of the of the funds and of the you know generosity of the people that support us. It, they give us their time, they give us their money, you know, they give us their gifts, and they also um, give us their experience. I mean, we had to think about what's the expansion in the next five, 10, 15 years. And I think that we have room for that now, which we didn't have before. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our broadcast. I love the fact that they're all in their costumes, too, because, you know, as a parent, some parents are like, oh, it's going to be so cold now. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you're going to wear that costume. We're going to have to bundle you up and everything. <laughs> I bet those kids were saying, I'm wearing my costume. <laughs> That's right. You know, we told teachers layers would be a good decision for today. So I'm hoping they're wearing turtlenecks and pants underneath their, you know, colonial dresses to but keep warm today. But that's what they did years ago. That's I mean, right. if you're looking at the historical aspect of this, it was all about layering. Of that's course, right. you didn't have jackets like we had, but it was all about layering. Yes. Well, and uh, the roughest part of living um, in, in those times would have been the summer, in my opinion, because... <laughs> 
You especially weren't wearing this... shorts, especially if you were a woman, <laughs> and there weren't flip flops, so it was it was rough and warm. <laughs> especially in this area, we all That's know right. how hot it gets in this particular area, and the humidity, and and, and that kind of thing. That's right, and the bugs. <laughs> But the there bugs. are no mosquitoes biting the children today. So no gnats, no mosquitoes. <laughs> Just a fabulous day and beautiful a downtown Savannah. And we're, we've been live streaming on WSAV.com. Now remember at noon, you'll be able to watch uh, parade coverage on WSAV. And, of course, tonight at 7 p.m. on My LC, you want to make sure you are tuning in because we will have parade coverage for you then as well. So don't miss it. So all the folks at work who uh, were not able to come down and you're not around a television, make sure that you get that word out. If their kids are marching today, you'll be able to watch that tonight at 7 p.m. on My LC. In fact, that's going to be a full coverage of the parade from start to end, so that's going to be great for parents to watch when they get home and see all the excitement that they may have had to miss for work. All of our schools have now arrived at City Hall. And let me tell you, look how many kids are out there in front of that, uh, the big stage. Uh, they're looking forward. They are looking forward to hearing the dignitaries. They're looking forward to hearing from Hernando DeSoto and also the big announcement right. of who wins that <laughs> banner competition. Why do they get so into that each year, Sophia? And what is it that they look forward to? Because they get really serious about they it. They are very serious about it. In fact, I had teachers picking up the banners yesterday after they've been judged and trying to get out of me who won because they said <laughs> their kids are just dying to know. Because she knows. <laughs> That's right. I do know. Um, well, you know, it's because they really work hard at it. We tell the teachers that it's most important to us that we can tell the students did these banners. So they have the kids working on the banners. And I think we're listening to the national anthem. That's right. Right now. playing the national anthem. We're so grateful that they came out today and marched in the parade. And this was their first performance. They've this, been working incredibly hard, looking forward to uh, this performance that's today. That's right. They've been working very hard, and they were very excited to be a part this year. We'll hope they'll be a part of all parades to come. Now, Sophia, as we're sitting along the parade route, uh, of course, the kids are waiting to hear, of course, from the presentation stand, all the fabulous news that they're going to hear. Uh, what are they thinking right now, would you say? <laughs> I'm sure they're all thinking, I bet we won. <laughs> and I wish they all could have won because I'll tell you what, every single banner we saw was just fabulous. So I'm sure they're excited and, and wondering if they can guess based on where they're standing, if there's any clues of if they won or not. And I hope they're just having a lot of fun. And, of course, on the presentation stand uh, in front of City Hall, of course, you see the big Georgia Historical Society banner. You see loads of dignitaries on stage right now. We see uh, General, uh, George, uh, General Oglethorpe up there uh, along with uh, the Grand Marshal of this year's parade. That's right, and right now, uh, President and CEO of the Georgia Historical Society, Todd Gross, is making remarks. And... Uh, behind that, you see Mayor Edna Jackson, and they'll all be making greetings to the students.
Superintendent Dr. Mayor, of course, we just heard from uh, Mayor Edna Jackson, and uh, of course, Dr. Todd Gross still talking up there. What a fabulous, fabulous day. <laughs> That's right, and here comes Chrissy, and for the last several years, she's been the one who tells who wins the banner competition, so I'm sure when the students see her, they're very starting to get very excited. So this is what it comes down to right here. And they're going to give a first place winner, a second place winner, and a third place winner. That's correct. First, second, and third. And this was decided by the staff at the Georgia Historical Society had a chance to vote on the banners based on criteria of neatness and creativity. And of course, the all important, could you tell that the students were the ones who really did the banner and not just parent help? So that's our main criteria for the banner competition. And it's getting very exciting. I think here we go. This is uh, the kids are all excited. Look at them. They're jumping up and down. They're excited. Okay. And we just presented a book to Dr. Lockamy Delaney Industries every year uh, helps us donate a book to each school about the featured historical figure. And that's what they just did. Today to celebrate the birthday of Georgia and the birthday of the city of Savannah. But also today is the beginning of a historical event as we introduce the old, old district. And didn't they do such a wonderful job for their very <laughs> first performance? That's so great. Yeah. 
is Jennifer Landis and baby Eleanor. And on this side we have Dr. Dion Hoskins, Mr. Sean Cashmar, and Mr. Uh, Lauer and Ms. Hall send their greetings as well. These are all people who work very hard to serve you and to serve your school. So we are very grateful to the Georgia Historical Society for making this happen today. And uh, most of all, we are thankful to your teachers because we know that it was a lot of work to get you down here today and get everything ready. So can you give your teachers a hand for me? You know, Thank Sophia, you. so wonderful to see such participation with the Chatham County School Board here uh, on this fabulous hey, day. Minutes, so I need a little reminder. Who is it that we studied this year? They know. They're paying attention. That's right. <laughs> Can you give a few words to you this morning. Oh, look who's Hernando joining us. There, there he is. is, Hernando De Soto. All, All decked out in his what honor. Is <laughs> what is Diaz? I'm a really uh, excited that you guys got to learn about me this year, um, and I'm really excited to see your uh, your banners. I don't think I've ever looked so handsome before in my life as I'm looking at myself right now. <laughs> uh, a man of few words, that's Jesse Woost like at Wormsley anyway, State Historic uh, Site portraying the, Hernando DeSoto this year. Uh, I did a lot of bad things. But I had a really good attitude about the future. Um, we had a saying that translates into more over there in Spanish back in the 1500s. And, and kids, what that means is no matter how tough life is right now, there's going to be a tomorrow. And there's more for you to do then and there. So never give up. Nice, nice message An from Hernando. Message. A, little, uh, a little shy there at first. That's right. <laughs> Well, you know, they didn't have cameras in the 16th century, so. Or microphones. For the That's right. He was just getting used to the technology. General Good morning, everyone. The founder of the Georgia colony. You know, Never a loss as, for as words. I Absolutely. Down the street with you this morning, down the center of this vast city. I looked up at its tall buildings, marveled at how far we had come. And now that I stand on this stage and look into this crowd and see its future, I know how far we can go. So thank you so much for being here and keep studying. That's what a really a wonderful message to hear from the founder that he's proud of the students today. Okay, now so I have true. some trophies so to give away. We can away. go so very far. Right. You guys did time. a great job with the banners this year. Uh, and I'm going to ask Oglethorpe and DeSoto to come up and help me here. So Hernando DeSoto and Oglethorpe, an we'll Englishman and a Spanish so together, will help hand out the trophies. We'll be assisted. To That's right. Up here on stage. They are they working together here. today. All right, so <laughs> Not always in the past. Okay, you ready? They are. Okay. All right. Third place, West Chatham Elementary School. Woo! West Chatham Elementary School, third place. Good job, what a wonderful banner they had. They are excited, you're gonna get to take a look at their banner, they're bringing it on stage. Take a look at that. Now Sophia, a lot of work went into that banner. That's right, and all one right. thing we loved about this banner, they showed all the Second different place. river systems in Georgia. Calvary so Day School. Second Calvary Day School. Calvary Day School. They are making their way to the stage as well to accept their second place award. And you'll see a theme in all first, second, and third place, and that's geography. And that was their task, was to make a banner that showed the geography of exploration. So here wow. you see the map and the ship. So they really covered all the criteria. And that's something new this year, the geography that you guys included in. That's right. It's not just about the figure, but about the theme and the First time period they the came from. The 2015 First place. banner competition is Hancock Day School. Hancock Day School, the big, big winners. First place, and listen to the cheers of the crowd. <laughs> and one thing we loved about Hancock's banner is you could see the handprint of every child on that banner. They all clearly participated and they really learned a lot about geography. Each student made a compass that they put on the banner. You'll see when they get on stage with their name on it showing 
the directions of different cities all over the world from Georgia. So they did such a great job. They really deserve their first place. And Sophia, win. how long do they have to work on these banners? We put out the curriculum and materials in November. So they're working on them starting in November and putting them together. And you know, a lot of parents volunteer to help with the banner competition. So we have to say thank you to the teachers and the parents. What a fabulous, fabulous banner that is. And you said that it was clearly uh, a clear winner, as you could tell that all of the kids had participated. Those fabulous Congratulations friends, to I all that. of the winners, but congratulations to all of you. You worked very hard. Your banners are fabulous. Give yourselves a round of applause for all the hard work you put in. Another wonderful Georgia Day parade. <laughs> this was so exciting. Well, this a fabulous, fabulous, Georgia and Day congratulations to and the banner winners, of course, the our third place, second place, and our history. first place winner. And you want, we want to make sure that we remind you that you've been life. watching live streaming, you've been live streaming on WSAV.com, and you'll be able to that, watch parade coverage on WSAV at noon. And here's the thing, you'll be able to see full parade coverage tonight on My LC at 7 p.m. So make sure you're in front of the television tonight to make sure that you watch this fabulous parade and these wonderful kids once again, 7 p.m., My LC. And I just want to make another special thank you to all the teachers and students who participated today. And even if your banner didn't win, I have to say from someone who judged them, they were all winners. They were absolutely excellent. And I hope you take something away from participating in the Georgia Day Parade that you'll carry for the rest of your life. And like Dr. Gross just said on stage, in order to really understand our present and our future, we have to know the past. So always keep studying our history. And here's the thing, we want to make sure that we thank all the fabulous sponsors who made today possible. Big thank you to our parade coverage sponsor, J.C. Lewis Ford, as well as all the other fabulous sponsors for the festival. This has been a busy month uh, this year. That's right, and a special thank you to Georgia Power, um, who sponsored the parade for the Georgia History Festival, Delta, Coca-Cola Company, Colonial Oil, Jepson Associates, Sonova Sea Island Bank, our signature media sponsor, Savannah Morning News. You all made this day possible. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the dignitaries. And we want to also thank WSAV and our entire crew right. for making it possible for us to participate here. And I have to say this, Sophia, from all of us here at WSAV, Thank you and thank the Georgia Historical Society for the fabulous work that you guys do because you really are such an inspiration, you know, to carry through the history of not just Georgia but America and really pass that on to the younger generation. Well, thank you so much, Natalie, and we really appreciate all the hard work that WSAB puts into the parade coverage each year. It's really fabulous, and I know the parents love being able to watch this again tonight on My LC at 7 p.m. and the rebroadcast at noon and online at WSAB.com. What a great way for them to catch all the fun that happened today. And we look forward to it each and every year, working with the Georgia Historical Society and the Georgia Day Parade. Remember, you can see the parade coverage on WSAV at noon. And tune in tonight, 7 p.m. on My LC. I'm Natalie Hendricks. And I'm Sophia Simi. Thanks for joining us. It's been a fabulous, wonderful day here in historical downtown Savannah as WSAV has brought you the Georgia Day Parade. Happy Georgia Day. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Southern Scene coverage of the Georgia Day Parade. Presented for you with limited commercial interruption by J.C. Lewis Ford.